peace to you all. The blessed name of great assurance. The great name of our precious Abba, Almighty Yahweh. Through the power of his might revealed, Yorkshire Hamashiach, we may gather on this Shabbat and to be reminded of all of his great excellence, what he has done, what he will do, what he shall do, and what shall be completed in your shoes. So we greet you all, Yisrael, so glad to be in the fellowship of his elect, the nation. We may share in the abundance of the bread, the lechem, that we will never grow hungry. We will eat until the full that our bodies and our minds are so permeated with this great manna, the bread from heaven, that our will become servant. When I will become servant unto Yah, you will see the proclamation in our flesh, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we behave ourselves accordingly to his commands. And so I'm glad that Yah continuously reminds me and he opens up the simplicity of Torah unto me. I'm not one like many that want to speak profound things as they perceive that they are profound. Any word that Yah speaks is profound. If he says the words all, A-L-L, that's profound. Because every word is taho, it is pure. We just do not take refuge in one or two words, but in every word that proceeds out of his faith. So every word that Yah speaks is profound. And so I prefer to be like the uneducated statesman for Yah and Yahshua. I don't want a vocabulary that is beyond the comprehension of the people of Yah. I do not want to speak with some kind of poetic form. I want to speak truth. And that it calls us to understand the reasoning of Almighty Yahweh. And that is what truth does. It calls us to understand His reasons. And the reason that He performs a thing. And reasoning is simply a just judgment that which is calculated according to the proper procedures. That's all a reasonable thing is. That the judgment is right and is correct. We're not concerned about what's going on in the world. I'm concerned about what's going on in the world of our own minds. And I will speak with, as Avraham would say, with Ud. Ud. I will warn us today. And the Ud of Yah, or the warning of Yah, is not some sarin going off. Not us being abreast of the New World Order. But it is to be constantly reminded that it must be repeated over and over again. It must be done again and again and again until it becomes more than repetition, until it becomes innate. And part of us and part of our character and who we are. And that mark of the excellence of Yahshua HaMashiach shines forth. From the brightness of our roots, men shall know that we're not like every man or every ish. We have been purchased with a doubt. Yahshua HaMashiach. 
So I'm going to go round, around, 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 again, and again, and again. And I'm going to exercise the same phraseology with the syntax that the words I will point out repeatedly for the purpose that it will draw our attention unto the most important thing, and that is that word that is in the form of that phrase that Yah speaks, that you will be abreast and aware of every single word. You cannot discount Yah. If you discount his word, you discount Yoshua HaMashiach. He is the Dabarim, the word, the Daba, the promises, the utterance of Yah that has been bara made flesh. He is our constant. He is our constant. When the ship is sailing and the waves are beating with such torrential force against you, uh, we can find the constant steadfastness of the truth of Yah that it will sell us, settle us, uh, bring us back to balance. I see things at times. There are things that are so appalling, so vile, and so filthy before Yah. That the only resolution of it is death. The only resolution is death. Muth. Mavith. That one dies... Let no one trick you and say you cannot die before your time. And one dies prematurely because they have negate. He promised us three scores and ten. And by some reason of the assurance of his uz, his koach, we reach beyond those years. It is time we defy the Most High. It is time our, what we call our moral compass, has lost its direction. And it is time we go estranged and astray from what's written in the book. Then we're going to die. And as I see what is being promoted today in this world, I'm not talking about this illicit activity of this biological world. I'm talking about the world of iniquity that permeates in our minds. That we do things so carelessly without even the fear of Yah that caused us to turn back, to shoot from the direction we are traveling. We offer up the true repentance, Jeshuva, that we repent of our ways and our sins and do that which is sadiq before him. I want to teach today this teaching as I expressed to my Isha some weeks ago. There was an incident that I visually saw. And I could sense the vile nature of the act that was so hideous and heinous, so vile, with such stench. It was odious. It was obnoxious. It was hateful, it was defying. When I got home, I began to immediately search Torah. I don't search the gossip column. I search the book of my right and rights. I did not look at the Constitution, the preamble, the amendments, I looked at the book 
whereby the dawn of your shoe has amended me, and brought me back unto the commonwealth, Yisrael, to the heritage, the abundance, the greatness of truth. That I take my resolve and consolation in the book. That I know where he stands on every matter and every issue. Before I go further, I want to read a descriptive of the one that ordained this book. I want us to be attentive. I want us to jot down the Hisve, the scriptures I will use. But some other time later that you may reference them again. I want you to understand the consistency of words and one particular word in our vernacular it is A L L. Oh. In the language of Eop, it is kol. It is the volume of all. It is not partial, it is everything. But before I began the process of that tumultuous road that will uh, root us up and out and reveal every kind of secret thing that is in his nation. I want to read who commands us. It is found in Dibarim, Deuteronomy, Dibarim, Deuteronomy, chapter 32. One verse that I want to read. Verse 39. Dibarim 32. And verse 39. Your commands us to see now. Open our eye end. And develop the spiritual depths of Yahweh in Yahshua HaMashiach. He said I want you to understand that I. Simply that I. No one is compared. There is no parative. Even I am, I am, I am he. He said, there is no spiritual or no God or any other power with me. Nobody but him. He said, I want you to understand that I am the one that moves. I am the one that kills. I want to establish the parameter of his great power. Yeah. It is not the new world order that's going to kill me. Right. It is not the forces of hell that Yah has caused to rise up, to afflict. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that we will have one total resolve. Yeah. That Yah is our confidence. Hallelujah. He is our confidence. Yeah. We won't shake. We won't rattle. We will not turn away from him. He said, I will establish the dynamics of my power. I am the one that moves. I'm the one that kill you prematurely. Before you reach that ripen age, I am the one that will kill you. Not hush your tongue. Not the military power and the elements of the war machine in America. He said, oh, I'm the one that killed you. I want you to know that I will kill you. I am the one that killed because you have neglected the moral constitution of Torah. You have rejected that. And so I am the one that caused your life to cease before the determinate season. He said, and I am the one that make. I am the one that give uh, chaya. 
I want you to understand that you're waking this morning. I sustain you uh, through the night. I am the one that makes alive and cause life high my breath of strength to flow from the depths of your bedroom. I am the one that restores you in the midst of all of your agonies, uh, in the midst of all of your great pains and great burdens. Uh, I'm the one that restores you to life, uh, and I'm the one that resurrect your health. I am the one. He said, I want you to know that I won't. And he was my heart, Yeshua. He was wounded for our transgressions. It was not the world that wounded him. It was Yahweh that wounded him. He said, I want you to know that I am the one that wounds. I am the one that smite you with the sword of life, the living sword. I'm the one that wounds you severely with the word that proceed out of the simple messenger's mouth. And he says, I want you to know that I am the one that Rafa, that is my name. I am the one that heal and restore and bring life, not just in your biological being, but cause the life, the awe, the ma'o of rejoicing, understanding the riches of my heritage to bubble from the depths of your wisdom and that it shall flow out of your heart. He wants us to understand one precise thing in the latter parts. He says, neither low, no one, nothing. There is no possibility. Neither is there anyone. Not your mother's prayers, your daddy's, not your prayers. Neither is there anyone that can deliver you out of my hands. My yards. He said, once I place my hands on you, and once there is a determination of my judgment, all the prayers in the world are not going to deliver you. You can cry all night. You're not going to be delivered. I establish my protocol I announce it throughout Torah. There are things that I love. And there are things that I so may, I hate. They are vile. They are repugnant. They are odious. They stink. It is so vile and so filthy. It can never be rid out of man. Among him, out of the Olam, the Eretz, the fullness of the earth, unless I kill him. Unless I kill him. Understanding that he is the one that kills, makes a life, he commands us. Not by proposition, but what he commands of us in Romeo, the writings of Romans, the scattered nation of his people throughout the empires of the world. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. This is the heart of Yah speaking. He says, I beseech, I Allah, I pray, I beg of you. I ask you, I intrigue you. Therefore, all of you Israelites, Achim, you that are the pillars of my set apart place, my Mikdash, I command you, Achim, 
that you by the kindness and of the hasid, the great love of Almighty Yahweh, he said, I want you to present your body, your bodies as a living zabah or a sacrifice for the learnings of Yah's people. He said, I don't want you to present. One said to me, well, what you are saying, Ruyak, it has a connotation of something that is done through a process of a natural form that it is fleshly. I said, the whole book is about destroying the elements of the flesh and there's a living promise in us that we obey him because we love him. He said, I want you to offer unto me the essence of you, your mind, your will, your nephesh, all that constitute you because I made you. He said, I wanted to be alive. I wanted to be high. I wanted to be strong with a great rejoicing. I want to see the mirth flow from you. I want you uh, to present your bodies to me uh, as a living offering uh, unto me. He says, I want it to be kadosh. I want your mind to be set apart from the appetite of the world. I don't want you so easily persuaded by the world. I want it to be kadosh. Not only that, uh, he says, acceptable to me. And the only way we can cause the offering to be acceptable unto Yah, yeah. there are the prototypes in Torah. Hallelujah. We must follow them precisely. Yeah. And there is the most significant prototype, and that is the word that was made, that offered himself for our sins. To take away our sins. He said, I want you to understand this is your reasonable. You can access this. It simply implies your reasonable service that you have sound judgment. Your judgment, your mishpat has been created by what Torah commands. The construct of your judgment is so sadiq. It is so righteous that there is no unrighteousness intertwined with your sadiq that calls you to err on the favor of that which is so vile and so repugnant. It is so evil that the only way that Yah is going to rid it he must kill everything that touch it and associate it with it. He must do that. That is our sound judgment, our reasonable service unto Yah. It must be based upon knowledge, da'at, discerning of what is true from the book. We must be able to discern that. The writings of one of the most profound messengers of wisdom, Shirak. It's important that I lay some cornerstones here. He says here in Shirak, in chapter 15 and verse 13, one verse. I want you to hear this, Shemach. There is nothing about this verse that is not understandable. I don't care whether you are a novice. You that are wise beyond your own perceived conception of you. Yah says this. The two vital words that I want to point out in Shirach chapter 15. Verse 13, he emphatically speaks without any interwoven language to subvert the direct point. 
He says, I want you to understand that Yahweh, Almighty Yah, Sony, he hates with a passion. It is an enemy of Yah. It will try to dethrone the Most High that Yah hates all. Coal, the whole quantity, the whole amount, the whole specificity. He hates all abominations to a bar. That which is so vile, so irreverent, so filthy, it is full of nidah. Now, Yah would not be just if he tells Shirach to write that for me, and if he doesn't name out every single abomination, that which is to Ebad, so vile, that it caused the nostrils of Yah to move with such trepidation of anger that the earth trembles and it shakes. He said, Yah hates all. He hates all. He's sonny, call sonny. He hates all abominations. There is a S. To shape the plural form of abomination, abominations. And he gives, gives unto us the identity of his era, his seed. And they, the abominations, the phraseology is simple. He hates all. Do not let, allow that word to escape. Because we want to reject some and embrace others but he hates all abomination and they are not loved by those who fear Yah when a man fears Yah there is nothing vile that is to Ebah that he will embrace that he will have an attraction to he will not be drawn unto that. Yah hates them all. It's not that he hates some. He hates them all. He so he despises all to Ibma. All abominations. We that are the house bear Israel Elam. And if we hear, fear him with reverence, with honor, then we will obey all that he commands us. Uh, we will not accept any of them. We will not have a defer between any. He names every last one of them. I have searched the book from Bereshit to Gilgalna. I have studied, I have read, he names all of them. Everyone. He hates all. Abomination. And that doesn't bring any clarity of books that I am familiar with, my friend. May I inject the writings and the voice of Moshe? In Dibarim, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, chapter 25, and one verse. He speaks of the duplicity here, the falsehood, the injustice. When a man's mind operates in an unjust format, that he weighs matters differently. That he weighs a matter of my circumstance much more heavy than he weighs the matter of his own private circumstances. And so his judgment of me is much different than his judgment of himself. He doesn't, not at all, suppress himself 
or cross himself to the same judgment that he would judge me so that Nobi, the messenger of Yah, writes unto us in Debarim chapter 25 and verse 16. He says, those that they're not balanced according to Torah. He says, for all, again the words all. For all abominations, Yah hates. Zoraman has an unjust balance or weight. He will favor and defer to these, but those he will repudiate. But these are all right because they're in my house. Those are not in my house. He hates all abomination. Moshe says that those all that will perform these abominations, that's what an unjust and unrighteous and evil mentality it will do. It does not produce the essence of the wholeness of Torah, of Yah's image. He says, for all that do such things, and all that do perform asa, fashion their minds and their conscience, uh, that there is no fear of Yah, and all that do evil, uh, he says that they are an abomination to Yah. Your Abba, not some, not the ones that you prefer, not the ones that you have this radiant attitude towards, but all that will function in that unjust, evil fashion. It is an abomination. Unto Almighty Yahweh. And I'll give us the second witness of that statement found initially in Proverbs chapter 17, Mishli, Proverbs 17 and verse 15. He that justifies the wicked. To say that those that are the Risha, the Rasha of Yah, to justify them because you have an unbalanced concept of the truth of Yah, he said, You will justify the wicked and you will bring damnation and condemn. The just man, the Yasha, the one that walks straight, yeah. the one that lives right, yeah. the one that denounces his flesh, mm-hmm. presents himself before the cadre of the people, yeah. and is not ashamed to be corrected by the Torah. Yeah. So you justify the wicked, and you speak words against the just. Yeah. He said, the one that you justify, The one that you justify, even both, are abomination unto Almighty Yahweh. Agand Ud. I repeat, but Shirak says that Yah hates all abomination. So you justify the cronyism of this one. You condemn this one because of the beam in your eye. And if you would correct yourself, you would see clearly how to get the small matter out of their eyes, but to justify the one that is vile. The one that defies the ways of Yah's Torah with a defiant attitude. You will say that they are all right. And it's fine. Yet you condemn me And all that do so, you are a to a You're filthy. 
You are one of the most detestable things in the face of Yah. You are so unclean, you are extremely hateful. He hates you extremely. There's nothing that he hates like to Abraham. Nothing. I'm going to point them out because I want to get to one segment, one truth. I want to point out the tremendous wrath of the earth that shall be poured out upon this vile, impugnant, insidious act, actions by people that say they love Almighty Yahweh. Shirak in his great wisdom again, you must hear this in order to understand the chronological process that I will proceed in. He says in Shirak chapter 17, chapter 17, Shirak, and there is one verse I want to read, verse 26. I want you to see the constants or the uda. The repetitiveness of the first word, ter, shu, shu. And this one verse, we don't pay attention. We don't adhere to the words that are constant. Repeat it. Yah says, uh, I'm speaking to us today. Turn to God. Shu. Turn around. Turn again to the Most High, Almighty Yahweh. Turn again, Yisrael, to Almighty Yahweh. That again, he commands us to turn away from your ovin, your ovon, your iniquity. Your ways that are so vile, they are so hateful. They are so detestable. They are so insidiously wicked. They are so abominable. They are so odious. You are so nasty and filthy. You are so repugnant. That's what he to Abai is. It's easy for me to look at you. I must, by the in, inter perspective of myself, see my nature beyond. How how have esteemed myself uh, and I've vilified you. Uh, it doesn't work that way. He did not say to he said turned. Shoot. Turn again. He's undoubtedly we have turned away. Turn again. Where? Where do we turn? Turn back to Torah. Turn back to the ways of Yahshua. Hamashiach. Turn back to Yahweh. And then we turn away from our vile, insidious, devious, devilish, wicked ways. And that which is abominable unto Yah, he's going to kill them all. I know it's difficult for us to buy that. Even when man says the act of nature, the tsunami doesn't respect the baby that sucked the mama's titty. It doesn't respect the mother. It doesn't respect the cripple. It doesn't respect the blind. It doesn't respect a range of uh, color, colors uh, of pigmentation. It kills everything. It doesn't respect the cattle of the field. It kills babies, sucklings, mothers. And yet they will buy the acts of nature, but they will not buy the truth of Yah. He says, I want you to turn, for we do that. Then Yah will lead us, he will guide us out of our own hushach, the darkness of our minds, the sadistic places where we allow our thoughts to reside. He will lead us out of darkness into the light of Rafa, of health. He will lead us to that. 
the writings of Yareya, your names out everything that is an abomination to him, we shall not eat. He names out everything that is an abomination to us. We shall not eat. I want to say this to you all, you that are listening and you that are here. We go into these vile restaurants and we buy and they cook every kind of unclean thing. And you eat. And we wonder why we're in the shape we're in. And it is consistent. It is not something that happens at a time of great need or hunger. We do it to satisfy our lust and it's wrong. It's not right. It's wrong. You wonder why we have not. Yah says, turn. Those that love Yah, we will not love abominations. We that hear of that fear, yeah, we will not do that. Uh, he's named everything that was an abominable thing. He says that the catfish is abominable. Don't eat it. But you can eat the sea bass because it has fins and it has scales. Uh, and you will go where they're selling sea bass and catfish, frying it in the same oil, uh, and you will dine on the sea bass. Uh, it is not of your Yisrael. Uh, he gives us, he said, return, uh, eat the living bread. Let us draw from the bread of life, Yahshua. Eat the truth of Yah. Eat the word of Yah. Eat what Yah commands. Uh, you eat that bread of life and return back unto the Rafa, the health of Almighty Yahweh. We don't get by Yisrael. We don't mock the Torah of Yah and do those things that are diametrically opposed to Yah and think that there are no consequences. It's coming back to haunt you. That's why our health is bad. We have eaten the swine, we have dined on it, and we go to the restaurants where they cook pork chop and sausages and all, and we buy the hamburgers. You don't have to buy it. And I frankly don't give a damn who I'm touching. Makes no difference who you are. Yah has a perfect order and a perfect law. He will lead us out of darkness into the light. You're sure the bread uh, take, eat, eat my body, his flesh. We must eat the living word of Yah. Drink the dam of your sure Hamashi for he is the word of life. He is the word of health. We'll eat catfish dumplings, but we won't eat what Yah says. Don't eat it. He gives us a bill of health in his writings. He tells us what not to eat and what to eat. And that's why we're dying prematurely. You don't sow in this body and expect not to reap. Yah is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can go down and buy your fried Bojanga french fries and your fried Bojanga chicken wings. It's fried in the same fat as the pork chop and all the rest of it. You can justify it. And yet you will condemn that one that eats pork. You are vile, wicked, liar, full of your own stench. He will... Bring us out of darkness. He will bring us to the light, the ma'or, the rejoicing of our health, the ma'or of our health. And hate, we must. It says that Yah hates all abominations, so we must hate abominations intensely. Rabah. Not some of the abominations. It must be with intents of an aggressive hunger. That's what Rabbah is. It is so intense 
He's like a man that hasn't eaten in days and not realizing the state of his stomach. And he gorges himself and eats until he becomes sick and he regurgitates it. You got to hate them so. That any time you find the seed of that in you, uh, then you ingurgitate it. Uh, you puke it up. Uh, you defy it. Uh, you don't embrace it and love it. You don't wrap your arms around it. You must suddenly. You must hate it. Intensely. I don't care if it's mama, daddy. Brother, sister, son, daughter, it makes no difference. You must sonny, you must hate, you must vilify it the way Yah hates it. You must hate it. It ought to make you sick to do things that are disgusting to young, that are so horrific, that it's vile, and it stinks. This teaching is the abominations that brings death. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count the abominations, call them all out. And I shall. And I'll give you the reason behind this teaching when I'm done. For your own good, for your own warnings. I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to go over it over and over again. That's what, wood is. That's what the warning of Yah is. Hallelujah. I want to speak from the Nobi, the prophet of great integrity, all of them. He writes, Yes, Kel Ezekiel. He was a prominent figure in the captivity of the nation. There in Bovil, in Babylon, he was the son of Buzai. He was a messenger of Almighty Yahweh. He was the one that spoke unto the nation because his name implied, I am emboldened by the strength, or his name, Yah's strength. And so he came in the strength, the choach, the might, the power, the strength of Yah. He sent him to a nation of people, and there is no man that deals with the abominations of Yah's people, like Yeremiah, Yeskel, and Ezekiah. Nobody deals with that. And so the multitude of my texts will come from here, and I will incorporate the witness of what he said. This man prophesied and spoke among the nation in captivity. For 22 plus years, uh, the exact number men tried to determine. But he spoke profoundly, prophetically unto this nation. A rebellious people, a hardened people. It is your sins. It's not because you don't like me. It's not because my words upset you. It's your own sins that harden your heart uh, that you can't... Uh, Apply the truth of Yah to your own heart. And so we give reason for your own abomination. And you will say it's me. No, it's you, man. It's you, woman. Because if you have opportunity to do right unto me, do it. Despising what I do unto you. I want to teach. I want to clarify quantify and qualify Yah's truth. Yeah. We began here in Ezekiel. Yes, In chapter 5, verse 1, verse 6. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 6. 
I want to bring upon us the first indictment of Almighty Yahweh. Why he's going to judge us. The nor be the strength of Yah through this man he speaks. He says, as she, as she has changed, we are a people that's more. We're always altering things. We critique them for our own will as the nation, as Yerushalayim. She is the mother from above. As she has changed, she has disposed herself of Yah and removed herself from his commands. That's what we do. As she has changed, my mishpatim, my judgments, she has changed them into wickedness. There's a way that seems right unto man. And the ways of a man's heart, they're right to him. But the case or the end of that is death. You're going to die prematurely, man. Woman, you're going to die. Yours the one that kills and makes alive. He's going to kill you. He's going to kill you. We have changed the judgment of Yah into some of the most violent crimes against him, Risha. We have changed the ways of Yah. We have corrupted judgment. You judge your son this way and judge me that way. You judge your wife this way and judge yourself this way. You judge your husband this way and judge yourself another way. It's vile, it's sadistic. It is evil. You correct yourself first, man. Woman, you correct yourself first. It's your beauty that will correct others. It's the strength of your character, man, that will correct her. Hear the Torah of Yah. You have changed the judgment of Yah into wickedness. You have created a violent crime against the Most High. He says more than the goyim. Even the wicked world will not do what we do. He said, if you've done it more than the going, there are those that were principles. Yes. Will not go to Fat Burger's pork chop, please. I'm using that as an example. Don't get carried away, all right? Yes. There are those that will do decent by people more than we will act decently yes. with others. He said, you have corrupted it more than the going. You will condemn the Ach of the whole thing, but your mother is wicked and your father is a vile thing. And you never speak against their evil. You are sadistically evil and twisted in your mind. He says, you have been criminals more than the Goyim, the nations. He identified that which is close to his heart. He says, my statues. More than the countries that are round about you. You have done so much evil. You have disengaged my Torah, my writings, my truth. You have elected you a Jesus Christ. You have rejected the wholeness of my counsel. You have raised up a white God, a black God, a Jew God, a Greek God. You have denounced my name for one of the most damnable twisted lies upon the face of the earth. Your sons, the countries around you, they will fear that name, man. And they will get quiet. Yet you denounce it. He said, and not only that you have refused, you have uh, ma'az. You have rejected with disdain. You have vilified. You have abrogated, separated yourself. You have, he said, not that you may do it, he said, you have refused my judgment, my mishpat, my mishpat. Tell me one that rejoiced in the judgment of Yah. 
We don't want anyone to say anything to us, do we? We want no kind of Musa, no counsel. Because she's younger, it means nothing. Because she is younger than me, you are a simple, immature boy and a little girl that has no compass uh, of any kind of knowledge. You will not say that on the job with the young girl uh, that commands you or the young man that is your supervisor. Yeah, yeah. yeah when it comes to young, a balance it is an abomination. No one is going to get by today. I began in my own house. We have refused the judgments of Yah. We have refused the statutes. And we have not halach. We have not walked in the ways of his truth. Strike one. Strike one. That was a slow ball there. Now he brings the speed of the fastball. It looks as though it's going to break on the outside. And it's coming that way to break on the outside, but it drops on the inside. This must drop in the inside of your heart. Strike two. Yeskel, chapter five, verse seven. Therefore, this is what Almighty Yahweh, the sovereign, yeah, he's the one that kills. And he makes a lot, and no one is going to deliver you out of his hand. No one. He needs no other supernatural power with him because he is all-powerful. Therefore, this says the sovereign Yah, because you have multiplied or hamun, you understand that as they multiplied in the wilderness in the Bimidbar, Yah says not just Rabbah but hamun. He says that as you multiplied, the more you numbered, you growl like a dog. You are like a pack of wolves. There was always a tumultuous cloud rising, and you made noise. In the days one would talk that riff, and one would say, you're talking loud, but you're not saying anything at all. You can talk that talk all you want to, but just don't challenge me. He said, there has been much hamun. You have grown numerically, he says, more than the goyim, the nations that are round about you. But he says, and you have not, lo, you have not halak. You have not been intrigued. You have not walked in my hucha, my statues. And what I command you, the way I direct you, the way I instruct you, he says, neither have you shema, you have not guarded, you have not kept my judgment. And then he speaks to us, neither have you done according to the judgment of the Gohim that are round about you. You have not judged their ways the way I command you. So you have integrated yourself with them. And you have given your mind over unto the same principles of them. You have embraced them. You have not judged them the way I commanded you to judge. And the reason you could not judge them because you had turned away from my judgment. That's why people don't like judgment because they have no true judgment in them. Strike two. And here comes the fastball, knuckleball, because it is deceptive. It doesn't look as though that it's traveling with the velocity of the fastball, but it mesmerizes you in thinking that this one is out of the park, and all of a sudden it drops with speed. It comes, and it catches you by surprise. Strike three. Here in Yeskel, I want us to give attention to this attentiveness. Chapter 5, verse 8. In each one of these verses, we find, therefore, this is what Yah says. This is the strength of Yah that utters from the bosom of this man. Therefore, 
confessors, the sovereign Yah. I want you to only to behold, to consider. He says, I, I, even I. Will you hold that for a moment? Put your finger there. And go back to Debarim, chapter 32, verse 39. Hold that. And go back to Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 39. See now, behold, only the same word. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Yah says, I want you to behold or only see now that I, even I, I am He. Does He say that? He doesn't change. And He says here again in Yeskel 5 8, Behold, I even I, no one is going to deliver you out of the hands of Almighty Yahweh. That's what I say to all young men. I'd rather you labor in two verses and talk ten minutes on them than to have countless ones. But there's no knowledge of that. I'd rather you labor on three and give me clarity of that. I will give you clarity to everything I speak today. It is vitally important. Hear this. He says, no one can deliver you out of my hand. In Debarim 32, 39, neither is there any that can deliver you out of my hand. That's what he says. He says, by his strength of your skill, he says, I am against you. Since you will not execute judgment, I will execute judgment, mishpatim, in the mess, your mess, in the sight of all the nations, the goim, they will know that this is my judgment. And I will be the orchestrator of judgment. I will expense my judgment. Why, yeah? He says, and I will do in you. I'm going to perform. I'm going to assign in you that which I have not done. Look at me, everyone, please. He said, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I know we don't read the book because we don't name them. Men want to talk with volumes of words and think that they have an insight to knowledge. That doesn't mean that they have an insight. A man of wisdom answer more with his quietness than a man with a volume of words. Yah says this now. I want you to hear this. Because there's something that's going to happen that is equal. And much more cataclysmic than this. Look what he says now. He says, I will do in you which I have not done. And where unto you I will not do any more like it. Is he going to cause us to be destroyed by water again? No, he is not. He said, I will never. And Yah's word is his bond. He cannot lie. Yah says, because of all. You see that word? A-L-L again. He hates all. To Abab. He said, because of all of your abominations. Therefore, I'm going to cause the fathers the avats. He does not mean figurative. He means achal. I'm going to cause the avats to eat the sons in the midst of you. He's going to cause in this hour the women to sodden their children. The sucklings. Near Yanak, he says, I'm going to cause the daddies because of your abominations. They're going to eat their sons. They're going to akal. They're going to fraud them. They're going to roast them. They're going to eat their own sons. And they're doing that figurative too. They relish in the proudness of the wickedness of their sons and their corrupt ways. They promote that and promote their sons. He says, and I will execute Mishpatim in you. And the whole remnant of you will are scattered into all the winds because of your vile, insidious abomination. I'm going to cause the daddies 
to eat their sons, Yeskel, Fartan. Therefore shall the Avat eat the sons in the midst of you, and the sons shall eat their fathers. It's going to be a cutthroat world. I love my boy more than I love gold. I love your truth more than I love my boy. I love my daughter, nothing I will do, not do for her. No, I will tell her the truth. Not only are the fathers going to eat their son, but the sons are going to eat their fathers. The old cliche here, that he just eats my heart out. I don't know what to do, unquote. And this is your, he hates all abominations. We think that we are going to slither our way in by some kind of emotional entreating. It, we must do. We must walk. We must obey the commands. I will cause, yes, said, I will never do it again. For the sight of it will be beyond comprehension. That I will cause the daddy to kill his son because of his abomination. He's going to die prematurely. I'm the one that kill and make a lie. And I'm going to cause the son to kill his greedy, wicked daddy. For I will bring famine and pestilence in the land. That's why you can eat pork. You can eat pork chop. You can eat shrimp. You can eat things that are so foreign in your food that you don't know that it's killing you. He restores us unto health by taking heed to his word. Those that you're sure healed, they had to take heed and hear. Be ye made whole. And he sent forth the healing power of his Torah when he preached to us this way. He said, I will execute judgment among this nation of people and the whole remnant will I scatter. I, I want you to pause that with me for a moment because I want to inject one verse right here. A scripture from Shirak. Shirak, write it down. Shirak. Chapter 41, and one verse. Why shall the sons eat their fathers and the fathers eat their sons? Is this is something they have gravitated to? No, it was something inherent innate in them. Sharad says, 41, uh, verse 5, uh, he said, the children of the sinners uh, are abominable children. And those that sin and defy Yah, even their children are abominable. And they are, you will know that they are abominable. Why? Because they are accustomed to dwelling with the wicked. They love being around wicked folks. They love the company of wickedness. They can sit out and criticize them because they're eating ham. And they know they want a slice of it. I don't eat that, but you eating in the midst of a house of wickedness. I'm not going to do it. You can. I'm too old to change. I'm going to go in his way. I've had few to love me all my life. So if I change through their ways, they're still not going to love me. They're not. So I'm going to stay in his way. Order my steps in the Torah. Yahweh, teach me in Lamad. Guide me every day. Send the fullness of your Torah, Yahshua, in me. I will walk the way he walked. Boom. I have nothing else to live for. I can't be about pretense and falsehood. My life is too short to be that now. I don't need money. Send an offering, you wicked thing. I don't need it. I am more content than any man could be contented. I have bread today. I'm going to eat. She prepared me enough yesterday. I can eat some today. I don't need to, but I may eat a little bit tonight. I can eat some tomorrow, some tomorrow night, and have some for Monday. I, I don't waste stuff. I tend to just hold on to it for a few days, and I go back and eat it. 
I'm not aroused with food like that. I never have been all my life. I've never been aroused with food. And I discipline myself by denying myself of certain things because I know I can't do it. No one loves cake better than me. But I've had it in so long, so when I saw the young as eating those brownies and all, wow, it did not face me one bit. And I love cake. But I know I'm getting old too. Hallelujah. Here this is on your back in the scale 5 and 11. 11. This is what Yah says, wherefore, as I live, is he alive? Says the sovereign Yahweh, surely, surely, because you have defiled not only the body of our living tabernacle, but we have defiled the house of Yah. We have no regard as to the way we dress our minds when we come in here. And the thoughts that are in our minds, our attitudes, our sin and our corruption, that we retain in our minds and in our hearts, we have no concept of that. He said, you have defiled my house. You have brought into my house uh, this offering uh, that is of a harlot and I will not accept it. You brought burdens into my house. It's wrong. Yisrael. I was speaking to my wife. I said, it's one thing I've never done. I have never been in a position where I've been upset with her that it curtails my teaching or my preaching. So I'm going to validify all the women and rebuke them when it's her. When it's her. When it's her. And so I'm going to put all the daughters in the same category that she is in, in her rebellion ways. I will never do that. I won't do it. There are men that do it. They're not even men. They blame all the daughters because of your rebellious, wicked wife. No, I won't do it. Shut your mouth, woman. The steps of a subdued man, they're ordered by you. He orders my steps aright in Torah. We have defiled his house, his Mikdash place. Then he tells us how. He says with all of your shikuts, your detestable, your filthy things, your idolatrous mind, it is so wicked and so unclean. Your mind is full of idolatry and idol worship. That's why our minds get idle in Yah's house. We become disengaged. Our minds become idle. Not I-D-O-L because that is the composition of an I-D-L-E mind. We began to worship a biscuit or something to, uh, to enhance or satisfy our flesh. We must give earnest heed to the word of Yah. Not some kind of superficial formality uh, of our corrupt ways. Uh, we must give earnest heed, he said. We have defiled the place of Yah with all of our detestable things. Uh, does he say that? He says, with, with your detestable things. Uh, and he can continue here, and with all, A-L-L, right? Yeah. All your abominations, he hates them all. All your abominations, your toeba. To Therefore, Yah says, I will diminish or I will gara. I will withdraw myself. I will remove myself away from your mind. Your thoughts won't even be on me. And you will complete your abominable ways. You will do them. He said, neither, neither, lo, no way in hell where you're going will I show you any kind of hamal I will show you no pity none whatsoever strike three you out you gotta stand there all dysfunctional in your delusion and wondering why me why is this happening because you thought it was coming on the outside you thought it was slow enough that you could catch up. 
And it dropped right on the inside corner, just catching a fraction. And it took eyes for the empire, umpire to see it. Struck through here. And you stand there in amazement. And you have battle against you in your mind. I'm going to bring this home today. You battle against him. And you think that you're going to walk into the kingdom knowledge of the blessings of Yah. You are a fool, man, woman. You are silly. You can't even go into the kingdom knowledge or the kingdom truth. How do you know, man? May I read this in Galusia, Revelation? You're already branded. There's a brand on our mind. Yohanan Yohan speaks to us with profound warning here in Revelation chapter 21, one verse I want to read, verse 8. He said, I want to remind you that those that are fearful, you has not granted unto us a ruach of fear, but a power, a hava, and a sound mind, not to love the world, but the love is Torah. We don't have to be fearful of what consequences will come because we love Torah. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. He says, well, the fearful and those that are unbelieving, they're unfaithful. There are you that have watched these videos for years. You won't send one nickel. It's not that we need money, but we do. And they are wicked as wicked can be. I will not take it back. They're wicked. Oh, I get strength from you, preacher. Well, strengthen the words here. That others may get strength. He says, those that are unbelieving and those that are abominable, they're filthy. They do every kind of damnable. Wake up, son. Wake up back there. Wake him up. They do every kind of damnable, twisted, sit upright posture. Every kind of vow thing there is, they do it. <clears throat> Y'all cause them abominable. They're unclean. They stink up to lower hell. He talks about those that harag, the murderers. They kill. I've never shot anyone. But because of your vow nature, you hate me without a cause. You hate your ach. You hate your achot. You're worse than a murderer. But because you're full of abomination, you love the wicked. You can talk for hours with them. Hey, girl. <laughs> well, tell me what's going on. That's vile. That's wicked. That stinks to hell. Hey, Mama Jack, what's see how you doing? And go around. Torah of Yahweh. There's no around. He says, and those that are Zana, the whoremongers, they're not satisfied with Yah's truth. Not just in the physical application, but it's greater than that. It's one that when you get understanding of the Torah, you're looking for something new. And they go flirting with every kind of damned of a vow spirit there is. Uh, talking insanity and nutty talk. Uh, I talk truth. I speak the simple things uh, that identifies what's in us. Uh, and correct our ways. Uh, and show me what I'm lacking. Uh, they want to show everybody they got something. You don't have a damn thing. Uh, because your life represents what you have. The way I walk tells me what I got. It is the truth. He said, those that are sorcerers, they conjure lies and they make truth a lie. They talk out of their crazy mind because they have interpreted something wrong. And he talks about idolaters. Those that esteem themselves and worship themselves. I'm not like her. I'm worse than she is. Glad I'm not like him. I'm worse than him. If it had not been 
For Yeshua, writing my name, tell me where would I be but in the belly of sin? Tell me where would I be if it had not been for Yahweh sending him sign my name in his heart. There's no way I could walk right. Certainly I could not talk right. But he rescued me oh, out of the valley of Hinnom. Now I'm free in your, I'm free. Nothing shackles me, no money, no offerings, no friendship, nothing. Nothing binds me, not my wife. He said, those that are idolaters, and listen to this, all of these are classified as the same. Again, the word A-L-L, all liars. All those that are full of shekha, distort, deceive with mirma, with deception of treachery to lie, to alter. All liars, all liars, I'm talking to you, all liars. Is he, me to say he lied. What about my lies? All liars. All liars. They are abominable unto Yah. All liars. We were taught, you can tell a little small lie, every lie is a lie. We had a respect to the white lie. You could tell a little white lie. But a black lie was wrong. It's a damnable twisted philosophy. It is out of the gates of hell. <clears throat> he says, and all liars. So my friend says to me, well, that you're implying that it is implicit with some kind of, of physical form. Oh, sure, it is everything we do. Our physical mandate is under control of Torah. He says, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. You can think that's the end, she all of the grave, but you are a flat out liar. He must eradicate this performance of the mind. It must go down to the fire of hell. Or you better let this living fire that speaks and proceed out of the bosom of Yah speak to your damned of a twisted mind. And you cleanse yourself. A fire is a purger. It cleans out all the dross. You're going to hell and this is the power of the second death. For these bodies to meet the demise and the decay, that's nothing. It's when the door of Yah's heart is shut and you're not entering into the fullness of his creation of man to sit with him to die. Yah is not going to be in a physical form like us when we see him. He is Ruach. That's why he sent Yahshua. Yahshua is not Yah. He is the son that was bara. He was made. He is the power of the visibility of Yah. He is the strength of his nature in a body. That's why he calls us his Achim. And the daughter is his Achutz. It's a Achutim. You must get it right. You're not going in. Jilomo and all of his demise. The writings of wisdom gives us great warnings. I'm going to finish this today. Wisdom chapter 12 verse 22. The writings of the book of wisdom. I, I want you to indelibly capture this in your mind. Let me begin reading, all right? This is a warning to us and for us to take earnest heed. He says to us, listen, he says, so while he chastised or he chastened us, so while chastened us, his correction upon us, Yisrael, that we began to hamun, we began to murmur, and the tumultuous voices, he says this, you scourge our enemies 10,000 times more. That's why the Torah calls these light afflictions that we endure. 
for the great reward that shall be revealed. For what? Why you chastise us so that we might meditate upon your tav when you, when we are judged? We don't think about Yah's greatness when he judges us. We don't think about this Musa, the counsel of an elder, telling us you're wrong, daughter. Son, stop that silliness. Now get up for the matter. Get up for the, for, 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 for the task at hand. We'll correct it so we can go and see how tough he is. He woke me up this morning. He started me on the road of his chastising. Every Sunday he receives us daily, he chastises us. He corrects us betimes. <clears throat> and so when we see what he does to the world, then we meditate on him and see how tough he is when he judge. And when we are judge, we expect the hasid, the kindness of Yah. Put your rod on me. I said to one yesterday, made an infraction. It was nothing major. And I said to his Ema, give him five paddles. That's all I wanted him to have. And so the daddy took hand, he gave him nine. Stop it! No! And I forgot Zakim Benjamin can run like he used to. He could take off like a jackrabbit. I said, no. When I saw him yesterday, he looks at me, he smiled. Hey, boy. I said, you know why? And tender for his mama because her correction a little more tender than daddy's. That's a fact. Say what you want to. Not that daddy's correction was not tender. That's his son. They are equal. He is the flesh of his flesh. He's the bone of him. He is the progeneration of him. Don't be silly. And so I said, you know why I had them to spank you? I said, because if you think about doing it again, you're going to watch it to make sure. Where's Riyaki? Okay. You're going to be careful before you engage. It was not that his little counterpart was not guiltless of that, but he was guiltless that moment. He was guiltless that moment. So it's not him catching me. He's caught you. That's all that matters. Hallelujah. We can expect the kindness of Yah. We can expect that when he judges us. Therefore, those who in folly of life, they lived a veil unrighteousness. He said, you did. This is Yah. You did uh, hamam. You did torments. You brought trouble, vexation. You destroyed them. How? He's going to destroy you not because he wants to. He's going to destroy you as the wisdom of Shalomo says. And we were witness of his testimony through your own abominations. Through your own abominations. Through your own abominations. That's what's going to torment you. Through your own abominations. Why? For they went far astray on the paths of Erach. We accept every kind of God we impress with the wicked. We get bumps and we get diddish with the wicked. Oh, I haven't seen you so long, girl. Ooh, ooh. We get jealous of the wicked and they become this extreme supreme power in our midst. Something is sick in your damnable mind, my friend. Something is wrong with you. He said they went apart in error according. They began to accept gods. Not only gods, but animals, which even their enemies despise. We have a nation here that will lick a dog in the mouth and will not embrace a humankind. They will let a dog sleep in their million dollar house, but they will not let someone that is in great agony bathe in their tongue. They will embrace a dog, a four-legged beast, and love the dog and say they love them and don't know how to love me. 
and will not love me. You sit there, some of you are dogs in your house, and you say you love me, send an offering. I'm saying this for a reason. I don't need them to listen. They take up space on the live stream. Houses are full of abominations and every kind of filth there is. He said, which even their enemies despise. We have taken upon things and we do things that even those that know you say, they doing that? Now I know I'm not right, but I won't do that. I shall come on, my friend. That even their enemies despise, they were deceived like foolish little baby, little children, like babes. They were deceived like foolish little children. Therefore, Yah says, as to, as to thoughtless children, he said, you descend your judgment on them for what? To shahach, to mock, to sport, to play. He said, it's judgment to play with us. To show you that he is the one. He will kill you. He can raise you up from the dead. He is the one that wounds you like he did Yoshua. He's the one that make us alive. And he hates all abominations. And you're not going to get by. Not one bit at all. Therefore, verse 26 of wisdom 12. But those who have not heeded the warning. We won't take heed to what this simple man says today. He doesn't possess the eloquency and the skill, uh, mannerism of those, uh, uh, the high-powered ones. So no one listens to him. He said, you will not take heed to the warning of your sure light. Because we will not heed the warning of light. Rebuke will experience the deserved judgment from your when you hear the word of God, you don't harden your heart. You repent. When God taught you wisdom, chapter 12, from verse 22 to verse 26, you don't harden your heart against Almighty God, but you hear him and you obey him. Now, I want to get into some of the specifics of the abominations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that we may begin to guard our minds and our hearts against them. As the messenger of Yah speaks in Leviticus, where you are wrong. In chapter 18, where you are 18, verse 20, 21, 22. I want to ask us a question. Are we culpable for this if we practice what I'm about to read? Is the reward the same? Yeah, it doesn't change, does he? Well, let me ask you if this is a vile, destitute thing before Yah. Moreover, Yah says, you should not sheikh death. You should not lie. You should not engage. You should not promote. You shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's uh, wife uh, to defile her, to torment, to make her unclean, and even uh, yourself as well. You think that that's acceptable before Yah? But we're commanded we should not commit adultery. Yah says, uh, You shall not let any of your zera, your zera, your seed, uh, pass through the fire of Molech. You tell me that we should give our children over unto the fire of Molech, a god like Jesus Christ. The Ammonites, that the nation sacrificed their children to the fire of Hinnon. Well, we don't do that today. You cause them to be sucked out of your wombs. You burn the babies in your bellies with the fire of the radiation of death. You cause them to be sucked out of your belly. And they are still offering the sacrifices like the heathens. Like the heathens. Like the heathens. They're killing them and destroying them. 
They're planning parenthood. You should not, what Yah says, you should not give your babies unto the fires and the strange fires. Yah is an ish. And also the Torah talks about strange fires as well. Your children over unto strange teachings and doctrines and concepts and the wicked instructing them and giving them life somewhere. We are sick, demented, damnable generation. We're twisted, Yisrael. We're not going to get by. We that are strong men, we must stand strong. I don't give a damn what the circumstance is. You must be strong. Hear me? Listen now. He said, you should not let any of your seed fire pass through the fire of Molech, the Phoenician god. And not only that, neither shall you profane the name of your Abba, I am. You have denounced his name for Jesus, and Lord and God. You're going to die in your damnable Jesus. You have heard this truth and you reject the truth. I have no respect for that. For the beguiling and the trickery of lies. Have none. I have no respect for Jesus. He's a lie. He is a white God. I don't care what these false ones call themselves. Hebrews say he is that image. And I will not buy it. Period. Yah is Ruach. He's here. The air we breathe in. That's him. He's beyond the scripture superlative. So he gives us a parameter of him in trees, birds. Everything speaks his language except mine. The mountains speak his language. The torrent rivers. The bodies of water because there's no life in the water without life. He calls the oxygen, the nitrogen, the flow, and the animals live, and they grow that we can eat. Everything speaks of him. He's not condensed. That's why Yahshua came in the power of the expression of Yah. That's why he was well pleased with him. Hallelujah. He says that we have profaned the name. We have cursed Ara, your name. Look what he says in verse 22. You shall not lie, you shall not shachamb, you shall not ravish in some kind of meaningful way. You shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. They have lifted up this vile thing, this man, Bruce Jenner, and everyone is intrigued with this dog. They have emasculated the men. That's why everybody calls everyone. You guys know. They have defeminized the woman. Uh, that she is nothing but a two-bit slut that dressed like a dog. When the female dog is in heat, uh, she wants the male to know it. Uh, and she struts a certain way. When the feline is ready, she wants the time to know. Uh, so she walks a certain way. Yeah. Listen, daughters. That's why the world have you dressing a certain way. Yeah. Because these effeminate men, they design clothes to make you walk in a way that is not natural. You elevate yourself in a way. They, uh, these were, designs were done by men. And I speak to all you daughters, I love you. Don't get upset with me. Especially the shoes of the woman with her heels. And what's his name? Uh, Giovanni. He got that design because he watched the feline when she was in heat. And how she walks with her tail up and how she walks on her tiptoe. And that's how he began to design those shoes for the women to wear. That's a fact. I'm a student of life. I tell us the truth. Hallelujah. And so it propositioned and said, look at me. These are dirty dogs. You daughters, I say one thing, I wish that my wife knew how to make shoes, but that's a cop out. I should know how to make shoes because I would make all my shoes, every pair. I would skin these cows and goat. You buy a pair of goat leather shoes or goat leather jacket, you all might as well love me. Don't get up. Don't let the world fall. I say these things because I love you. I'm not trying to promote anything that is not 
of truth. I know what I'm talking. I'm a student. No, I'm not trying to show you how smart I am. I'm a student. And I hear things and I read things and I discover things all the time. You understand? So what man will lie with mankind like with womankind? That is vile. The Torah says it is to Eber. It is an abomination. That's an abomination then. And no abomination has changed. That those that say, well, we bless the food in Yahshua's name, it's all right. They don't say that. But, well, quote, we bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's all right to eat. No, you cannot eat pork. Yah says it's an abomination. You cannot eat eel. You cannot eat catfish. You cannot uh, eat those things. You cannot eat uh, uh, things that do not fit the destructive order that Yah commands. You cannot eat buses. You cannot eat crows. Uh, but you certainly can eat some chicken. You can eat some guinea. You can eat some turkey. They will eat anything. They will eat the same thing a buzzard eat. But Yah says it's clean. And so will the shark. It will devour a human body. And the sea bass will come along and pick up the little nibbits of that human body. But Yah says it's clean. He says the shark is an abomination. He says pork is an abomination. Now, you don't eat it. But you can eat sea bass. He said the lobster is an abomination. Now, I don't care how you bless it. It is still, and you can't bless it anyway. Whom Yah, what he has blessed, no man can curse. And what he has cursed, no man can bless. He has not blessed the catfish. He blessed the bass, though. He has not blessed the eel. But he sure did bless the brims. Catch the brims. Catch the bass. Throw the catfish back. It's an abomination. It is a to Abbas filthy. It is not right, Yisrael. You know that's filthy. Well, I will give you other references in Torah, chapter 20 of Leviticus. If you tell me this is not an abomination, just say, lo. Leviticus 20, 13. If a man lie with mankind as he lie with woman. Now, this is promoted in this nation, isn't it? We know that which is highly esteemed in the world is an abomination. They celebrate what they call men coming out. I'm a man. I come out as a man. I come out every morning as a man. I come out every morning. I wake up as a man. So what am I led with mankind? I, I'm giving us descriptions of how vile an abomination is. With mankind, both of them um, have committed an abomination. Yours says they shall shoot her. Kill them both. They shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. Don't even pray for them. Kill them all. He is the one that kills and makes a life. That's vile. We have become so innate with the world. We're afraid to say anything. These dogs are going to hell. Y'all's going to kill the Bruce Jenners and all of those dogs. They're not even dogs. And I apologize for the canines. They're beyond a species of anything. A dog will be a lawyer. A dog will defend you. A dog will warn you. A dog will bark. These dogs can't even bark. Y'all says not maybe. He says the word surely. You know what that means. It's without any doubt. They shall surely be put to death. And their blood shall be upon them. He also says in verse 14. And if a man takes a wife. Now you think this is appropriate? Is this not abominable? If he takes a wife, he just took a wife. And then he says to her mother, you come as well. I'm using this uh, as an example. I have a wife. I'll use me. I have a wife. And I said to Mother Smith, you come. And her mother as well. That happens all the time in the world. And her mother, he said, it is in my, it is wickedness. It is wickedness. I don't even want to talk like that. But I must teach it. He said, that's wickedness. It is an evil, mischievous wickedness beyond 
damnation. He said it's so evil. Look what he says in the verse. He said they shall be burnt with fire. You get them dogs out of here. The man, he didn't even say that for the, the Bruce Jenner's of the world. But he said the man takes a wife. I take this wife and her mother. He said burn them with fire. He says they shall be burned with fire both he and they. And there be no wickedness among you. He said, you've got to burn them. Get that out from among you. Is that all right to do today? Y'all cause it an abomination. And if a man, if any man, sheikh or beth, with a beast, with a beast, he shall surely be put to death. And you shall kill the beast as well. You kill him, and you kill the beast. Yah is going to kill them. Yah is going to kill them. He says, And if a woman approach a beast and lie down thereunto, you shall kill the woman. Yah has not changed. You shall kill her and the beast, and they shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. And tell me if that's not abominable. But what about this last verse here? He says in verse 17, And if a man shall take his sister, even an animal should begin to see the deformity after two or three generations of that. That's why it's nice to have a bull. That's why we sell cows. The genetic disposition is going to be distorted. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or even his mother, or even his mother, I'm showing you how vile it is. I'm showing us what an abomination is. And to take even his mother's daughter, he sees her nakedness he engaged. He understand her nakedness. Yah says this. You shall show love kindness, O Hasid, steadfast love kindness, that they be cut off. You kill them all. Karaf, you cut off in the sight of their people. Cut them off. Cut the heads off. He said, that's love kindness. You're going to show steadfast love kindness. You're going to show the Hasid of Yah. You're going to show love. Cut them off. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness, and he shall bear his filthiness of him, his wickedness. Let me impose this energy. We saw this superficial family down there in Arkansas, where even the politicians defend them. They had one of the most prominent, I don't, I've never seen it, one of the most prominent reality shows on television, about 20 of them. You may have seen it in the paper where he, 14 or 15, he was taking inappropriate actions with his sister. They was promoted by the councils of the religious orders that the son went all over speaking of morality. What were their names? Haggard or some, I know you know. It was a family down there in Arkansas that even the governor, the former governor that's running for president, what's his name? He even spoke highly of them and, 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 and uh, Pat Robinson and all of them. Well, he did that when he was 14. Uh, Sarah Palin uh, and Ann Colton, all of them, they, uh, you know, and Sean Hannity and, uh, and, and Bill O'Reilly, O'Reilly. I don't listen to these dogs, but I read a paragraph in a sentence and how they spoke so the daggerly family or something like that. Does that sound close enough, daughter? It's something like that. She knows what I'm going to The Daggerly family. Well, he confessed the other day that he is hooked on pornography. He has been so unfaithful to his wife. But his mother defended him. His father defended him. His sisters that he even touched inappropriately defended him. But Yah says, I'm going to bring death to the whole damn wicked house. He says, I'm the biggest hypocrite there is. He's not even a hypocrite. You're just a flat out damn devil. You are a damned of a devil and a dog what you are. You're not going to tell me that it's appropriate for a man to touch his sister and touch his mother. You're not going to tell me that. 
It's not appropriate for a mother to walk around like a $2 fluze in front of her sons like that. It's wickedness. It's wrong. It's wrong for a mother to get naked before sons and her children, even her daughters. She should even walk around like that. Uh, put some cover on your wicked backside. Uh, you don't expose yourself like that. You want them to respect the order of marriage uh, that your mind sees your body. I can see if it's just a husband and wife, she can walk like that all day long in the house. Uh, but you don't present yourself like that, woman. Uh, it's wicked to do that. Uh, you don't realize what kind of spirit you're walking in uh, and what you put out in your house. Uh, they're perfect they see your nakedness. They're dishonored. They say, well, every mom, this is what mama, their daddy walks like this, uh, so I can walk like this. No, you cover your nasty. I don't take nothing back. You cover yourself appropriately. You see, with your husband, you dress accordingly when you go to bed. You shut the door. That's what a man does when he marries a woman. He shut the door behind him. That's why he builds a chamber for her. When they go in, no one can see her. And no one is around to hear. He doesn't misappropriate his position. You cover yourself, daughter. Mama's walking around. I said to my issue, I say, look at that. Yes, sir. I say, you see how the daughter's dress? I don't know. These were not even Daisy Dukes. I said, look at the wicked mammy. I said, look at the dog of the mammy. I said, look how that mammy's dressing. Look how the children are dressing. I want to dress like a man. I don't want to dress like a little boy. I want to dress mature. I want to dress like a strong man. I want to look that way when I dress. I don't care about no fashion. I don't know no fashion. Damn fashion. I want to be set apart. Well, I must be striking a nerve among us. It makes no difference to me. Your daughters, you cover yourselves. I will be a wicked man. His children and your children come to my house and they see me with my shirt off. I'm not going to let your children see me that way. I'm not going to do that. I don't even want my daughter to see me that way because I would not want to see her that way. Different with my son, that's all right. But I'm not going to allow that. I don't care if they're that big. I don't care if they're that big. Look at how big they are. You walk around something in your house with your breasts all out and everything they see in that. Your son's seeing that. What is that? It's wrong, daughters. Hallelujah. Your mind is so him and your mind is will love me. It makes no difference whether you love me. She uncovered. And then you will find the boy uncovering, uncovering his sisters. He's peeping in on them because uh, they look a little different than mama. It's an abomination. You don't put that in your house, this daughter. That's right. You cover yourself, man. In the days a man had a house going on, he'd throw it on, put it around his money. That's right. Mother, she put on that old gown and went all the way down to the floor. She may have had on the undergarments under that, but it went down to the floor. That's the way she get up, and that's the way they should see her. They shouldn't see it any other way. You better get your homes right. This preacher man is not through there. He's going to finish this. I'm going to finish every bit of it. I don't care whether you like me or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah says that this one shall be cut off in Leviticus 20, 17, in the sight of the people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness. And he shall bear his iniquity. Then this family where the boy was raped, he was playing with his sisters, encroaching on them at night, and all of that, and even uh, uh, what Huckabee defended him. He was the former governor of Arkansas. Well, you can't bring that up in this man of the day when all the heat got loose, uh, and they were making hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, through a false reality show. They became wealthy and rich. And now, the roost is rowing now. Now you don't find them standing by him now. It's an abomination, my friends. Hear this. We must avoid those things that the world embrace and they highly esteem. Debarim chapter 18. I want to turn back a few chapters. 
Deuteronomy 18 verse 10. We cannot learn the ways of the world. Debarim 18 10. Yah says there shall not be found among you anyone. That make his son of his daughter pass through the fire. Or use kesem demonic root working. Uh, and all kind of sorcery. Uh, and use divination or an observant. Uh, and a chanter. A fortune teller or diviner. Uh, of times or enchantment. And there shall not be among your witch that works spells. Uh, and you're going to the root doctor. And the voodoo doctor. And the palm readers. You shall not be doing that. You're reading the horoscopes. Uh, you're reading the horoscopes. Uh, you're reading the horror. Why do you think they call them horror? Because they're full of horror and lies. You're reading the horoscopes. And they're prognosticating your future and your buys. My future's in the book. My life is in your shoe. My hands are in your shoe. In the Torah will I trust. Your God's my life every day. That's where my future. I got a great future right here in the book. I'm inspired every day. I don't need some demonic power telling me that this day you're going to stumble and you stumble you say oh they make you believe the lies I believe this truth I buy all of this today he said you don't do that and verse 11 or some kind of a charmer, charmer or a consultant a sha'al, with familiar spirits like yours or this wizard or necromancer Listen, look what he says in verse 12 again he used the words A-L-L -L, right for all cool. All that do these things, they are an abomination unto Yahweh. Why? Because, because of the abominations, because of the abominations, Yah, your Abad, does drive them out from before you. Yah says, I drive out the nation before you because I don't want you doing that. I drive out the people from before you because I don't want you being involved in those kinds of things. I don't want you to do that. And there are things that the world highly esteem, doesn't it? It sure is. There are things. Yeshua says that which is highly esteemed among the world is an abomination unto you. This is one thing I want to get to right here. And I'll tell you why I'm teaching this. Dibarim 22 verse 5. It says this, the woman shall not wear that which pertains a keli dress to a man or a gibor, a valiant warrior. Neither shall a valiant warrior, now this is crucial here, the wordings or the phraseology here, put. When you put on something, you shot that, put on. Look what it says, a woman's, a woman's simla, a woman's garment. Again, he says, for all, A-L-L, -L, doesn't he say that? For all that do so, an abomination to Yah, your Abba. Now, you can dress that any way you want to. He said, if a woman wears a man's garment, it's an abomination. I say to you all what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a dress code for visitors. No dresses or skirts. On any man. No halter tops on men. No dresses or skirt on any man. That's going to be the first code. Because if it makes no difference. I can wear what she got on today. And she put on what I got on. Yah says that all that do so. They are an abomination. They are an abomination. That's why he says uh, that the children of the sinners, uh, they are an abomination unto Yah because their dwelling uh, is among those that are criminals against Yah. When I went out the other day, we did not have the funds for me to take the trip. Zakim, that we did. Yochanan. His last name is Johnson, so Yochanan. I didn't have the money. And I cannot take from the funds of the immediate necessaries of the communities to do that. But it was in my heart. And I knew that Yah would make a way that it would not even 
circumvent or prevent our funds from not fulfilling the obligations as the achim labor that we have enough and the other gifts that come in. And there was a brother, I may not ever meet him from Texas. I know his first name is Eric. He sends a money gram. Well, all I got was the number. So when I went to try to get it, the woman says, you can't get this. Uh -uh. You got to know the amount. You got to tell me the person's full name. You got to have the telephone numbers. I said, oh, my. And she was very rigid. I said, lady, I got the number. She said, sir, this is policy. I understand that. So I write the brother back quickly. And I said, brother, I cannot get the funds because of this. You have to tell me the amount. If it hadn't been $50, it was a lot of money for us. You understand? $50 is a great blessing. Ten, five. It made me no different what the amount was because I was looking for $60. I said, I know he was sent $60. Well, that will help. That's a tank of gas. That'll take me up that one tank of gas. I don't know how I'll get back. And so he says to me, he writes me back. Gives me his telephone number, full name, and then he said the total of the gift is $1,000. Whoa! Well, I did, did not utilize all that money for the trap. That's been cheap. I did not. It did not interfere with the responsibilities here, what we needed. And so when I went to pick the funds up in CVS, I'm standing there, and the lady at the cash register, she said, well, you got to... We can only give you 500 in cash and 500 in, in a money gram. We use that for the community, all right? So that was enough to 500 really to take me there back and pay for the hotel. Plenty of food that we eat, Yokohan. And so when I was in the store, I'm looking, and so I went to walk out. Whoa, you know, when someone just, you know, you, 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 you come into the presence of one, you're not even aware of that because my mind is on this. Whoa. And I saw one that lived here. And they have a biracial child. I saw the woman she had on her dress down to like where my like like this. That's where her dress was. It was there. And I saw the daughter. She had on jeans that were so tight. When I saw them, I, whoa, I did like that. The jeans were so tight, you could literally see the child's anatomy. I said, how wicked is this woman? She dressed a child for the world. Now, you can't tell her she's not righteous. You can't tell her that. Because she was covered all the way to the head, at least to the head. You can't tell her she wasn't righteous. When I saw that, I came to my wife. I said, baby, it troubled me. That bothered me. But I saw how wicked this thing from hell is. That's a child. I said, Raphael, it would be different if you shaped like a little pencil. But the little baby girl, you could see the protruding of her shape her hips. And I looked. I didn't turn around to look because the eye contact, she could not avoid me. And I shook my hand. And I walked out of the store. And so when I got home, I began to search the run. I know what he says. But the, ooh, the warning that I take heed, that I take heed to what the book says. A woman cannot wear the garments that pertain to a man. She cannot put on pants. No more than I can put on a dress or a skirt and high heel shoes. I cannot dress that way. A woman that wears the garment of a man, that's an abomination now. And a man that puts on a woman's garment is highly esteemed among the world, isn't it? And they dress the daughters like dogs and sluts. The schools make them dress that way. 
They fill out a place because all the other girls are in their tight, skinny jeans. And they have to dress that way. And the parent parents are so immature and so damn wicked, they don't even think about their child. Your says it is an abomination. It is an abomination. It is vile. It's evil. It's wicked. The children of sinners. An abomination. We don't think that it stretched beyond the boundaries of children. When the tsunami comes, it kills one year old, one month old, those in the belly, 99 year old, 50, 60, 30, 20 kids of all. It respects no life. Y'all's not respecting something that's like a buzzard. It stinks. Our flesh stinks. You know, it's amazing because when people, those people that they live in remote areas. They don't have the body odor like we have. They may not take baths like us. But it's something how out of the element of city life and carbon and all of the fumes of the air that our bodies just take on odors. When I left, I put on deodorant. Those few days I was gone. And my arms were because I don't wear deodorant. I wear it every now and then. I don't put it on. That's the honest truth. I just don't wear deodorant. Because my body doesn't, it's not inhibited by smells. When I, I can work all day. I can work three days in a row. My stocks, I, I don't have no smell. I can wear them again. Yes, sir. No, nothing there. I'm going to wear this again. I can wear the same shirt for days. I do. Because I don't like for her to wash my clothes. Because you got to put them up. You got to fold them. I don't like that. I'll wear a pair of slacks for three or four days. And that's the truth. When I smell it, it doesn't smell, okay. Socks at least three days. Because they don't smell. And so people that live in remote areas, they don't smell like us, whether you believe it or not. Because they're not confronted with all the chemicals and all the airborne things like we are. They really don't smell like us. They really don't. And that's a fact. But when a woman puts on that, it creates a body odor that is wrong to draw the attraction. It's wrong. It's not right. And I saw that person with the child with that on. I said, Raphael, it, I don't rejoice in the downfall of anyone. I don't say, I told you so. That No, it's wrong. When I saw that, my heart was smitten. And I said, I will never put my baby on something like that. I will not even let my daughter come to my house. Me, that's me. I will let my daughter come to my house that way. I will not let my daughter dress in a way that is inappropriate for a woman to dress in. Yah means what he said. He hates all abominations. And if that what I read before that all those are abominations, so is this an abomination too. It is vile. It is filthy. You don't give your children to the fire of Moloch. You don't burn them in hell because of your ignorance and your stupidity. You don't do that, Yisraeli. You don't defy the commands of Yah. I don't care how dumb and how stupid you are. You obey the commands of Yah. You do what he commands. You know what it's right to do. And you just do it. Whether you're walking with him in truth, you know it's right to do it. You, do, you don't dress your baby like that. You don't sit unto the world that all men lust after her and get close to her. They're doing it every day. Look at that man that was making millions of dollars as a spokesperson of, of, of Subway. I'm glad I, I can recall in all my life ever eating out of Subway. I can recall it all my life ever eating out of a subway. In all of my life. I can recall hardest when I was a young cat because I was hungry. A big, one of the big old burgers like that, 99 cents, they were that big. Some french fries, strawberry shake, and apple pie. That was my meal. Wendy's hamburgers. And I don't know the last time I ate in a place like that. But this man is the spokesperson for Subway. And he's raping these 14-year-old and 13-year-old, going right to New York and trying to appease the public's attitude. He gave $1.7 million, but he's going to prison. This is how this world is. 
You take a little 13-year-old girl, a little shapely girl, you dress them up, you put some lipstick on them, you put something tight on them, I'm telling you, it's an abomination unto Yah. And he was going right to New York for the last five years. He's going to New York, and that's where he was entertained. They are, they, they are capture, capturing these young girls, uh, and they're bringing them in the slave uh, ownership and service to uh, And they serve dogs like that. Uh, you, you, I'll kill them all if y'all say, give me the sword, y'all. Yeah. You take a child like that, uh, and you're no good, mamas, you're no good. You know, you're not even a proper to dress your daughter like that. You're not even a human. You're lust of a dog, man. You offer her unto the gods of hell, of lust, and to make her abominable for men to desire. You're wicked, you child of hell. You give your daughter over unto that, and you dress her to that. There's an appetite for her from the world. He's going to kill them all. He's going to kill the mama. He's going to kill the daddy. He's going to kill them all. You promote that kind of wickedness. You don't dress it that way. No more you put your side on dresses uh, like these wicked mammoths dress that boy, boy. Look at that. He got on a hat. He walking like a woman. Uh, and then he loses his masculinity. Uh, they are demasculizing the man. Emasculating. They're taking their strength and his character. And they're causing you women to become dehumanized. To understand the beauty of a woman. To be a wife. And they'll be attractive to your husband. You don't have to be attractive to the world. You don't need to come into the world. You let him enjoy you. Everything about you. You dress to please him. Man, you're not looking for young women to look at you. You dress to please as a mature man. As a strong man. As a man that is not vulnerable, but a man that is strong. His character speaks of his beauty and his character. Woman, you put on. Your jeans, it's an abomination. You dress like a man, it's an abomination. Man, if you put on a woman's skirt, a dress or blouse, it's an abomination unto Almighty Yah. Yah hates all abominations. And the only way you're going to eradicate it, you're going to have to kill them all. He's going to kill them all. He's going to kill them all. That's why the sons are going to eat their fathers and the fathers are going to eat their sons. That's why the mothers are going to sod their daughters. They're going to eat them because of the abomination. He repays us with our abominations. With our abominations. With our abominations. Alto Eva, with the filthiness of, of our minds that we defy. We keep going on and on and on and say, well, I don't see why it takes that. It's nothing wrong. She looks nice in that. She doesn't look nice in it. You can't tell me any professional woman, she, when she goes to interview with that uh, vice president, she's dressed like a woman. Uh, she doesn't wear no pantsuit like a man because a man, when he sees that, he doesn't like that. Uh, even at that level, uh, at that level, a man doesn't like that. Uh, when a woman dressed like a woman, when a woman wants to get fixed up, she always put on a dress. Uh, she doesn't put on a pantsuit. Uh, she wants to get flat and looking nice. She puts on a dress. Uh, she puts on a dress. Uh, she puts on a dress. Uh, when a woman wants to look nice, she puts on a dress. Uh, the Hollywood whores, uh, I don't care what kind of event, you may find a straight one, but 99.9% of them, uh, where there's any kind of war ceremony, they put on dresses. Uh, they all wear dresses. Uh, they put a dress on their body. They may be naked as a dog, uh, but they got on dresses. Uh, you find the ones that are fruitcakes uh, that may wear a slack suit. And the reason why? Because they don't have uh, the figure like the other women have. Any woman that wants to look nice, she puts on a dress. And no man that wants to look sharp puts on a dress. No man that wants to look nice puts on a dress. He puts on pants. He may wear a suit or a necktie. He puts on a suit and necktie. He put on his tie. When he wants to look nice. So they have taken away because girls wear jeans tight. They got boys wearing jeans tight. That which is highly esteemed in the world is an abomination unto you. Please, you all just bear with me. This must be taught. Hallelujah. We have nothing to do and nowhere to go. Hallelujah. Can I show you? That I want to show you the nature of this generation, what they say. When I talk like this, this is how they respond. Well, I don't see that's wrong with that. You know what, son? Can I read it? I will read what Shirak says here. Shirak chapter 10. Write it down. Shirak 10 and verse 13. He says this. He says, uh, For Gaon, 
for one's own excellence, for pride. For pride is the reshit, the beginning of sin. And he that cling to it shall pour out abominations. Those that cling to their pride and sin, they become abominable. Well, I don't see, uh, well, Rayak said that, but I don't buy it. Because they have exuded, they have exalted, they have excelled themselves above the word of Yah. When one has pride, I'm talking about poor pride, rich pride, white pride, black pride, your children, you're proud of them in school. All pride is devious and damnable and wicked. No God is, is wonderful. Any pride is death. Well, I'm proud of my son. Then you're wicked man, you're wicked woman. I'm proud of my daughter because she thinks she's better than someone else. You're wrong, man. You're wrong, woman. I'm proud of no one. I'm not proud of me because I'm nothing but flesh. and stink like the, like a dog's dung. This is what he says. The beginning, pride makes one think as though that I can overshoot you. Pride, he says, is the beginning of sin defying the Torah of Yom. And those that hold fast cling to sin. They shall pour out not an abomination, but abominations. They shall pour them out. And he says, therefore Yahweh brought upon them strange calamities, extraordinary afflictions, and he overthrew them utterly. He killed them all. You can't be prideful, Yisra'ya. You can have no pride. Pride is the ushering of sin. And when sin comes in, you pour out abomination. Well, I, I, my baby can see my pretty legs. You're a wicked woman. Don't let them see that. Teach them that they cover themselves and honor their body and it's meant for their husband. You walk around naked like that before them, then everybody can see them. It's wrong. I don't care who you are. Woman, stop that. You have nothing that that's, that's great to look at. Stop it. And so pride go on. This majesty of oneself, it goes, it's the beginning of sin. When you're prideful like that, you're going to sin. What is sin? It is the transgression of the Torah. You defile the Torah of Yah. And then it begins to pour out. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with that. She looks nice in that. She, she's just a little baby. She doesn't understand what you're... But you're, in, you're imparting things into your daughter. You're making them vile and corrupt and evil and sadistic. You open up their hearts to every kind of wicked thing there is. And then you find them doing things and they're rebellious and they're hard and they go stand up against you. And then you find them with a baby in the house and then their whole lives disrupted and out of order. You teach them the ways of Yah. You show them the ways of Yah. You women got to come out of your damnable wicked pants. Your daughters are Zion, you cannot wear them. I don't care if you don't love me. Don't send one dime here. It's an abomination for you to put on a man's garment. So it is for a man to put on. I must put on that which is. To put on a woman's uh, kelly or simla, her clothing I cannot wear. I cannot wear it. No more she can wear a man's garment. That's a fact. I'm not going to embrace no daughter. If I had a daughter, she came. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to embrace I won't even hug her. You think I would embrace a son of mine? He'd come flopping up to me with a dress on and a wig on, lips painted. We get the mess out of our homes. I don't care if it is your son or your daughter. We get it out. We get the damn pictures and all out. That's a fact. There was one. I want to read this because I want to finish. Listen to this. Let me show you the power of pride. Let me show, show you the power of that pride. I want to witness the words of Shirak. Shirak says in 10.13, I just read that, didn't I not? Then look at what it says in Mishli, Proverbs 16.5. Let's see, now, I know what I'm saying, Yisrael. The way I work physically, that's the way I study scripture. When you all left, I was up Thursday morning because I wanted to get ahead of the thing. I was up at 3.45. I was outside working when it was dark. Look at this, all came because I knew I needed that that, that, that composition to glue things down. 
His lights were, were not on, so I went over. I know, I find it. I went to the truck. I found it. So I have the lights on the side. I just kept I'm walking under that. The light come on so I could work. And I worked the whole day. And I was wore out at the end of the day. I was tired. Because that's my dad called Zakain Tamasya, but I didn't call him. But I was tired. I worked. I worked. I enjoyed it. I worked hard. But that did not cause me to obfuscate my responsibility for studying the book. Not at all. Pride is the incubator of sin. And once sin takes its root, you're going to pour out abomination. Now look at what Mishli 16.5 says. Everyone that is proud in love is an abomination to Yah. Does Yah hate all abominations? So everyone that got proud, I'm proud of my daughter. She's doing so well in school. I'm proud of my son-in-law. I'm proud of my granddaughter. It's wrong. Everyone that has pride in their heart, you're going to, to perform things that are unjust. You're going to judge this granddaughter differently than you judge that granddaughter. You're going to favor that grandson, but you're not going to favor that grandson. You're going to look at that granddaughter, but that one right there, she's all right because she's not nice as this and she's not as pretty. You'll be surprised how people function like that, Yisrael. You cannot have pride because uh, it's an abomination unto Yah. He says the pride in love is an abomination to Yah. Though evil hands join hand in hand. He shall not be unpunished. You can be proud for all you want to say, I'm proud of my son. And you can join hands with him in his evil deeds. Their fathers and sons are out doing the same thing together. Smoking weed and running. And the son knows that his father, I'm not going to stop saying what I said. I've watched it here when these little effeminate boys conspire against their own daddy. The effeminate, I don't take that back. You never strengthen the hand of one that is against daddy. I don't care who it is. You may not understand. Daddy may talk crazy. He may act like a fool. I saw daddy out there and he was doing wrong. He's doing no more wrong than you. When a man doesn't know y'all like I and you, you're subject to anything. But once a man come into the knowledge of y'all, he put away those old things. He doesn't walk that way again. And you see it in his conviction. So what he has done in the past, it means nothing. It has no value. No, no different than my sins. Well, I was a virgin when I got married. It means nothing because you were a virgin. Y'all killed virgins too. He killed them all. He killed sucklings. He killed virgins and all. They are some of the most filthiest ones because their minds are filthy. And their thoughts are filthy. Nasty little heifers. Listen to this. Well, I want to show you the very power that pride. Riaboham, Zochin, Dawid, Yochahan. We talked about this. Uh, he brought this to my attention. In First Melachim, First King, chapter 14, 14 verse twenty-four. And show the example of this. It says, "And there were also Sodomites in Kadash." Isn't that amazing? Because the Hebraic is Kadash, and the Kadashians. Uh, Kadash, Kadashians, Kadash, Kadashians, Kadash, Kadashian, and they have mesmerized the world. I will not read one sentence on some dirty slut whores like that. I don't even read stuff like that. I don't even read it. If I'm looking at news, I, 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 I stroll past like, I don't read trash like that. It says, but there were also sodomites uh, in the land. These were those that sold themselves uh, in the houses of prostitution, like the assembly. They, they, there were places where they were, these were males, uh, and they sold themselves. And that's what these men are doing today. They're bringing in every kind of vile spirit, like the Benny Hens uh, and the T.D. Jakes. Uh, they will not talk against these sodomites because they're sodomites. That's why Eddie Long could be a sodomite with your sons and your young daughters. They don't want your daughters. They want your sons. Because they've had your daughters. They dress like boys and they dress like men. And they don't want a man. They don't want them because they have no femininity. So they create an image of a woman in your sons. And so they wear skinny jeans. Pants falling off. It's an abomination. Notice you better come out of those pants. Oh, turn it off, Jezebel. Find your dog. I don't care if you get angry with me. You're as angry with the wicked every single day. 
And when his eyes and his nostrils turn up uh, and, his, and smoke blows out of his nostrils, he says, damn it, kill him all. He's the one that kills and make a life. He kill your babies. He's going to kill you as well, mama. You train your children up in the way that they should go. Dress them like women and dress them like dignified women. You want to wear something so tight, mama, you want every man looking at you. But you dress your little babies. You got little babies around here, they, they're forming quickly. And so your mamas have to be careful. It is the truth, man. I do nothing get past me. And mama, you have to make sure you're tight with your stuff too. You daughters as well. Nothing get past me now. Not here, not in the world either. Hallelujah. Listen to this. There were sodomites in the land. And they did according, again, the word A-L-L. All the abominations. Yah hates all abominations, does he not? All the abominations of the nations which Yah cast out before the children of Yisrael. Listen, daughters. You see the Hollywood scarlets wearing pants, don't you? You know you shouldn't wear them. You know you should not. You see them with the tight jeans on. You know you should not dress that way, daughters. You know you don't dress your baby. My, your 10-year-old daughter, 11, you don't dress them that way. You don't sell them. You don't offer them to the fires of Molach. And then one day you find her gone. She was outside and someone has taken I was thinking the other day there are tens of thousands of children that are never found. They're lost every year. Tens of thousands. They will never see them. And they're right here in this country. They're enslaved. They're in encampment and homes. They're sold to freaks. And they're shackled. Every now and then we'll see that how that young woman, 23 years them too, they broke loose. And they're shackled. I'm not talking about poor idiots like that. I'm talking about those that call themselves the wealthiest and the elite. And they have harems of these daughters. God's 24-7. And they take advantage of them. I'm talking about little eight-year-old girls. He say, oh, look at that. Look at at her buttocks. Look at them jeans, how they fit on her. Look at that skirt, how tight on her. Look at all the titties that began the blood. Come on, nation. The little girls, they look like women today. It's not the Illuminati. Let the Illuminatis go to hell. My trust is in your, in your sure. They're an abomination unto all money, Yahweh. It's filthy. You don't put pants on your babies, mothers. You don't dress them in pants. You don't dress your sons in dresses and put bras on them. It's wrong. It's wrong. And many of these no-count mammies are doing that. They have talent shows in the houses. The boys dress like girls and the girls dress like boys. And they think it's all right. They, from the concept of their birth, are taking away their manlyhood and defeminizing them. And it takes a coward of a jackass of what we call a daddy to sit there and let the kind of vile performance take please. That's why you see with all of the men of dark hue, they make them play the woman role in Hollywood. Why not make a woman do that? They got the faggots like Steve Harvey and all of these dogs. They dress up like women and they skirt around like women. They got this dog down here in Atlanta. What's his name? Uh, the big time movie man. What's his name? Tyler Perry, they got this dog dressing up like Big Mama, like he's a big mama and a woman, and takes away the strength of a man. Six foot five he is, and he's dressing like a dog, and they cause him to dress that way, to take away from you, man. And you watch that? I will. Take your babies to the houses of hell to watch a dog like that. We think it's all right. They're going to kill your daughters and your sons. Damn a wicked thing. They call herself a mother like that. I don't care who she is. You strengthen the hand of the daddy. You know, I said to my wife yesterday, we had to take care of something. I said, you know what, Raphael? I said, even. It was hypothetical. And believe me, this hypothetical. I said, if 
we were separated, I would do right by you. I would. I would do right by her because she's been right by me. I can't lie and say she hasn't. The woman has been genuine by me. She's never, she has never disrespected my authority. That woman to talk to the man any kind of way in front of someone. You'll never disrespect the man in front of the children, women. You don't, you let the man talk, woman. And the children gonna watch, they gonna watch mama, they gonna watch daddy. Just let the man talk. It, it, it'll blow. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. And then he's brought his conscience and conviction. Then he knows he got to make up. He's just going to do it. Because you got to love them like we love you. Yes, you love the assembly. He's going to make up to you. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Y'all were gone. She said, Ray, what, what do you want for dinner? I said, baby, I, I, I'm tired. I'm not thinking about the food. I said, baby, I want to just leave me alone. What about the food right now? I got work done. I got to get this going right. What about no food? I'm not thinking about no food. I have work to do. I'm grinding now, baby girl. So she steps back down to the office. She says, you know, it's just nice to be nice. I'm nice. I got work to do on painting. And woman, you thinking about frying some chicken? Cook something. I don't care what it is. Even if I say that, what do you want? I, what, what we have over there? Bring me some of that. And then I say, what do we have left? We got some rice. Well, bring me the rice and eggs. I'll eat that. And bring me a salad. That's all I need. I don't need nothing else. Just give me that. It is nice to be nice. Mm. I can't do this justice. I'm going to read a couple more and I'm going to stop. It's just nice to be nice. Bring me some rice. I love rice. Bring me a salad. And give me some more. All right. It's just nice to be nice. Oh, we are a pack of hypocrites. You know? I would have closed with a few verses. I'll get back to this because it's just, you know the words, uh, you know, it talks about Zaba uh, Zabach. It's in the scripture over 500 times in different, in different expression. So you have to search your concordance to understand these words. You just can't read to understand this book. He has hidden this. He has covered it in a shroud of mystery. And you just can't read chapters and, and, and just pick out something. It doesn't work that way. I'll, let me read a few more verses. And I'm going to close here. He says in Eo. Eo makes a profound statement. Hallelujah. Job, here, Eliphaz, uh, he reproves Eo in Eo 15, verse 16. He asked this man a question. Eo 15, 16. He wanted to know how much more Rabba, exceedingly abundantly, how much more abominable filthy and vile. And he used the words Allah or corrupt or filthy, morally tainted, no sense of direction. Becomes a man. Listen now. How abominable is a man, how vile he is. When a man drinks injustice like water. What is that? This nation has been one of a veil injustice. It's an abomination unto Yah. How much more abominable and evil are we if my judgment against her is lighter with much more strenuous judgment against her and to defy his home and his bed of comfort and yet she escaped everything and everyone knows she's wicked. When a man does that, he, 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 that's what Eliphaz said to Ejob. He said, hey, come on, man. Now let, let's look at you now. 
Now you, you have critiqued many over the years. Now let's look at you. This is poured out of you because uh, Yas pouring it out. Uh, how much, how abominable and how evil one is, Yisraya, when we do things when we don't have the just balance. I was watching in my Nadra family. My, my mother thought I was better than her sister's children, and we were both evil. We were hanging together doing the same evil things. I can knock on wood, baby. Well, keep knocking. It's going to break your knuckles. I don't have to worry about my chillings. That's wrong. We hang together. We do things together. We lie together. We steal together. We cheat together. That's what we do. Oh, baby, I'm so proud of you. You're full of abominations, mama. It's wrong. My children are not like them. You know, I was sitting here thinking as service, I'm going to close in a minute. And I thought about how Yah, my life, how he brought me through. Then I looked at these young men. I said, they have not been tainted by the world. They have not. I said, what a great blessing, something that I can't say. Then I looked at our Shimra, I said, what a young man that Yah did not allow the scouring of the world to just overtake him. And you, young sons, examples and patterns for you and you all. And I looked at these young men, my heart was overwhelmed. They have not been tainted and scarred. They have not gone the way of Bela Porra. God has kept them. You daughters of Zion and the ones that... Uh, you know who you are. You know what you experience. But when a man doesn't do anything out of the norm, that's a great blessing. You can say what you want to. That's, that's a character of strength there. Women are quite sneaky. And they will pretend, but you're not getting my baby, a uh, uh, little one. But when a man, when he doesn't go outside of the auspice or the, aus, uh, or the right of his manhood. And so when I looked at just these few, oh, yes. My heart was overwhelmed in fact. Because that's a gym. That's why he called a young man. Because they have known you. They have overcome the enemy. And that's why he makes you strong. That's why he makes you strong. When I say five paddles, mm -mm, I mean five. When I convey something, give it like I say it. Five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, just Five. You've lost it, old man. The time I see you go get him and bit him, he was like a lightning bolt. <laughs> oh, stop it! I couldn't run. I had on my Philly brand shoes on. I want to close here. Hallelujah. Yahweh is going to kill those that defy his truth. We'll close here from Yeskin, Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 11. This says the sovereign Yah, Almighty Yahweh. He said, I want you to strike. I want you to nakha. I want you to beat. I want you to kill, I want you to slay with your hand. He said, I want you to stamp. Ezekiel is 6, 11. And I want you to stamp, I want you to stomp with your foot. And say, alas, for all. Again, you see the words A-L-L, -L, don't you? For all the evil abominations. They said they have dedicated these houses to Yah. They've dedicated them to Jesus Christ. The women dress like they're going to a whole hopping, whole dog, dog house. Their breasts are out. They got every color toenail in their ears, every color fingernail. Strange men 
handling their feet, their hands, and the women dressed like a Hollywood harlot strolling the street, selling herself. And they are selling themselves to the highest bidder. They come in these whole houses when the old Baptist way, you couldn't put on a pair of pants and come in there. On the Methodist way, always the Presbyterian, they always did that. But the Methodists and the Baptists and the Church of God in Christ, the Church of God, you will never see a woman coming in there with pants on. Up there in Detroit, in one of the filthiest cities in the world, and the days of the Church of God in Christ, the old mothers wouldn't let them come that way. Baby, you got to cover yourself up. They had shawls and blankets. No, nah, baby, you put this, you said don't come in here again like that. They come like sluts. They come out of the damnable whole house all night, drinking and drunkenness, and they go right to the whole house to get comfort. Their breasts laid out. Their bodies exposed. They're wearing things that even a dog would cringe in. They come in there with pants on and stilts on that high and skinny pants. And the men come in with their skinny leg jeans and they dress like a loose, effeminate little boy. You dress like a man, boys. You don't destroy your reproductive organs by wearing something that tight. And they dress like a slut. And they are abominable. Even the Baptists in their days had a decency. Even the Methodists or, or the Pentecostals, they had a decency. Now the Sodomites of the Church of God in Christ. Nasty houses. Banging on the organs and singing. Tight pants on. Jerry curls and he curls and everything that is wicked. And the women standing in there with pants on and their double breast suit on, trying to act like a man. It's wrong. You dress in the beauty of Kadosh daughters. You think some boys look at you because you dress like a slut. All of them dress like sluts. He looks at you because you have a beauty that no other one has. He's not going to want you because you're like a slut. He wants you for one thing. You dress like a dog, he's going to treat you like a dog. You dress like a young woman, he's going to respect you that way. You dress like a dog and see what he's going to think. You're a dog like all the rest of them. You dress like a lady. When I was in school, we never even approached young women that carried themselves in a manner that were different than the sluts around us. He says, for all the evil abomination for bad Israel, for they shall fall. I'm going to kill them by the, by the sword, by my words. He said, I'm going to kill them by famine. They're going to die. Women are looking for attention today in men, but nobody cares for them. Nobody. They're going to die by pestilence. And he says in verse 12, he that is far off from Yah, those that, he's a nice boy. She's a good girl. That's how they say it. They're not tough. He said, fall shall die of the pestilence. And they that shall fall and they that are near shall fall by the sword. And he that remains, and you that try to take a stand, and besiege shall die by famine. What is your sin? And thus, I accomplish my hey, mama fury upon them. Y'all's the one that killed. Women, you better stop wearing the pants. You don't put your baby daughters on pants. As I said, this is the whole reason behind this teaching. When I saw that, it hurt me. You dress like a whore, mama. Don't dress your daughters like that. Don't dress your daughters like that. Period. Don't dress them like that. When I saw that, I say, wow. You know, they have gone so far from you where they would tell you how righteous they are. They would tell you how righteous they are. I'm serving you. No, you love the wicked. That's why you can dress your daughter like a $2 whore. You can dress her like a little whore. You can dress her to be inspired to be a whore. It's wrong. 
He hates all abomination. You women dress like that. Throw away the fashion of the world. Your beauty is not in that. Quit dressing like the world. Quit trying to make yourself. You don't make yourself pretty. We have, you have the tifra, the yafef of Yah. It is your meek and quiet ruah that make you beautiful, woman. It's not because you got on something tight enough that you can see your titty nipples. Your barak is out and you got something so tight you can see your organ construct. That is wrong. It's wrong. It's filthy. It's nasty. It's not of you. It's filthy. You men though, you dress, I, I tell you what, I will, I will capitulate on everything I said. You men start wearing dresses. You start putting on skirts and bras and all of that. I will capitulate. That doesn't mean Yah's going to capitulate. He's not going to change. So if you men do not wear skirts and dresses and, and blouses like a woman, then your women cannot dress like a man. That's his garment. He goes out to work in the steel, man. Now you bulldaggers may want to try to be a soldier or work in the steel or lay blocks. But her daughter of Zion, she wants to take care of her house and keep her house clean and keep it beautiful and keep the ruach of a man and the strength of a man in her house. I don't care what the situation is. She bound the children. She make them sit down. And men, don't take that away from your wives. Don't get upset. Young as a hard-headed because you know how damn hard-headed you were. Sit down, youngins. You're not going to get by with that. And she is your extension. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what, how it evolved. Makes no difference. I was saying, I was looking at you. Ishaw, she's holding that little heavy boy. I told her, put him down. She says, oh, I just like him. I... And I said, all right, uh, Shimri and the family, she... She must need just another little grand young and huh? So I looked at that, I said, oh man, she, she, she he, he's not like, I'm a man. And she was not gonna put him down, just sing it. And I looked back there at you and I said, all right now, okay. Mm -hmm. That's all right, hallelujah. That's all right, mama. I was ain't gonna fuss that. I, I don't want I don't want to tag you. I don't want to tangle with you, man. I need that alone. That's all right. We encourage you, Sarah Yahim. Let us be strong. All abominations, if you get nothing, Yah hates them. Every abomination. Everyone. He hates. He hates every abomination. And you knucklehead boys, you better not go to sleep in here. You go to bed at night. I mean that. You go to bed so you get up on time, lazy thing. And you don't want to tangle with me because I'm still tough. I'm still tough, Mama, right? I still got a little fire. He, he got a few more years before he can take me down. But now, he's not going to take me down. No way! Won't be long, he will. But as of now, both of you all can forget about it. Not now. No, sir. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, Baruch, you are friends and the ones that fell off, that's all right. Send an offering to help this preacher man to preach like this. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Bless you all. You all might as well love this man here. You might as well love me. Let's turn to Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim. Yah, we brought you for all things. Bless your nation, your people. Let the light of our mother, Yahushua, like him from above, shine upon us. Your healing in your Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.